Why, hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday, and welcome to the Big Blue Amusement Productions podcast. In today's podcast, we're going to be taking it to the amusement industry, and we're going to be talking about some latest stuff going on in the theme park industry. IAPA is going on this week in Orlando, Florida, so this is very exciting. We have some new, we have some information coming out from that event, and we also have some new rumors I'm going to talk about and speculation I'm going to talk about. So it's going to be awesome. So without further ado, let's get into this podcast, shall we? Our first big news for today comes straight from IAPA as the new Fun Spot Atlanta RMC Ground Up has officially been announced. The name is Air Force One or Air Force One. I don't know how to pronounce it. Not a big fan of the name. However, I think this is a big deal because... Like, this is like a small little park in Atlanta that is getting this massive RMC. I think Georgia is going to become a great state for coasters soon. It's going to be competing with states like Ohio, Pennsylvania, California, Florida for coasters, especially with this big old thing going to this little park. I think this is a big deal. And this, from what I saw, this looks like it's going to be one of the best coasters on Earth. It might even rival Steel Vengeance. So, I think it'll be awesome. Congrats to this park for getting this awesome creation. And I can and I hope to go to this park someday and ride this amazing looking ride. Also coming from IAPA, later this week, Ride Entertainment, which is the company that does business with Gerslauer, is going to announce another record-breaking Gerslauer going to a park in the US. Now, this is not the record-breaking Gerslauer we heard about earlier. That is Defiance at Glenwood Caverns. And you can check out my video on that. However, this is going to be another record-breaking Gerslauer going to the United States. And now, let me put it out there. It'll not be a big chain park. So, it'll not be Cedar Point. It'll not be Six Flags. It'll not be Kings Island. It'll not be any big chain park. As it's going to be opening in late 2022... So this will be a year-round park, and it's going to be announced at IAPA, and that's not what the big chains really do. So, if I were to take a guess, this is going to be going to a smaller independent park, similar to Fun Spy Atlanta, similar to Glenwood Caverns. It could be one of those little go-kart places in Pigeon Forge. It could be something in Branson. It could be something, like, down in, like, Florida. It could be another Fun Spot park. We don't know. We'll find out later this week. So, I'm excited for this. The layout of Dollywood's 2023 roller coaster has been leaked. And from the looks of it, it is going to be a multi-launch coaster of some type. Whether it be Mach, Intamin, or Vacoma. And according to Dollywood, this is going to be a multi-generational attraction. So, it'll be a family coaster of some type. But not just your typical boring family coaster. This is going to be... Something that'll delight everyone. Like, enthusiasts will love it, families will love it, little kids will love it. It'll be great. So if I were to take a guess, this sounds like a mock launch coaster. A small, like a family mock launch coaster. Similar to Manta at SeaWorld San Diego or Slinky Dog Dash at Disney. So, I think this will be a great addition to Dollywood. It'll give them a multi-launch coaster that is more reliable than their current launch coaster, Lightning Rod. And it'll get it'll be a great expansion and a great basically finish off of the Wildwood Grove area of the park, which is already a great looking area of Dollywood. And and from the looks of it, there will still be a little bit more room for expansion down the road. However, it'll be a little bit tough. They'll have to find ways to put, like, paths in there and stuff. But I think it could be done. So, all in all, looks like a great addition to Dollywood, and I cannot wait for this thing to be announced. The repaint of Kings Island's drop tower is underway. It is one of the seven attractions that is being repainted for the park's 50th anniversary next year. The others being the Eiffel Tower, Backlot Stunt Coaster, Adventure Express, The Racer, and Flying Ace Aerial Chase. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the current color scheme, and I like what they're doing. However, I can't think of the missed opportunity 
that is being played here of not removing the checkerboards and not going with a more dark, foresty theme or, like, gothic theme for Drop Tower with, you know, Banshee and, you know, the bat being in the area and just getting rid of the checkerboards because, you know, Delirium got rid of their checkerboards when they put in Banshee. So I think, like, it's not Paramount anymore. In it, and I don't think the checkerboards really work in that area anymore. So, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be negative here. I think the ride was due for a repaint. And I, and I think it's fine that they're just freshening it up. However, I do... I am just going to look at this as a missed opportunity to get rid of those checkerboards. And how they, how they just chose not to get rid of the checkerboards. And I just feel that is a big missed opportunity. Not crapping on King's Island at all. It could have, they could have just not repainted it. However, I just feel like this is a big missed opportunity to not remove the checkerboards. Could Knott's Berry Farm finally be getting a rumored Giga Coaster? Well, according to Screamscape, which please take it with a grain of salt. It is Screamscape, okay? So please take it with a grain of salt. Knott's Berry Farm may have finally gotten the green light and decided to pull the trigger on a Giga Coaster that is quite possibly going to take the record from Fury 325 at Carowinds, which is what we thought King's Island would do, but we got Orion, which did not take any record. But anyway, it sounds like that they are looking at taking the record. And according to Screamscape, the planned location is the closed uh, Mystery Lodge area, which is right close to Ghost Rider. It's in the Ghost Town area of the park. And it'll go use the parking lot towards the hotel. So, um, from what I from what I did, this is my concept here. I, I have the station in the Mystery Lodge area here, and I actually have it going over top this building. And no, they're not going to take down this building, as they do use it for other things from what I've heard. It's going to go over top that building. The supports will be much wider than those of, like, Orion, Leviathan, and Fury. So it can fit over there. And then it'll drop down by the hotel and use the parking lot and go on the edge. And according to what they want to do, they want to keep it a little more above the ground so they can still have those parking spaces available. So, yes, it'll be a parking lot coaster. But it's not Spray Farm. That's the only way they'd be able to fit a Giga Coaster there because of how... They don't have any more room, and this is a lot better than, according to rumors, they were originally going to have it go over top of Ghost Town, but the park did not want that because they did not want to remove the feel of Ghost Town, so they decided to just, so it looks like what they decided to do is put the station in Ghost Town and have it go out towards the parking lot. Now, in terms of theming, I think a Wild West theme, I know some people may not agree with me here would actually be a fine um, theme for this ride. I actually had visions years ago of a Western-themed Giga Coaster for King's Island, but we went with the space theme idea, which is a lot, which is a great idea. But I really like the idea of a Western-themed Giga Coaster. It's not like it'll be too much of a thing, because Diamondback and Raging Bull are B&M Hypers, and they have western themes and this is cedar fair they did a nascar theme for a b&m hyper so i don't think it really matters here i think no matter what as long as it's a good ride and they're able to get this done i think this will be a win-win for both cedar fair knott's berry farm and the southern california region as enthusiasts in california do not have a giga coaster nearby so this would be a great idea for that for the california fanboys out there who have always wanted a giga coaster at knots or at a park in their general area we'll see if this happens as it's just a rumor right now but from the looks of it i say keep an eye on that mystery lodge area and that whole area for signs of prep work because if you see signs of prep work going on there you can probably most certainly expect a large new coaster maybe a giga going to knott's berry farm for 2023 our last rumor we are going to talk about is comes out of santa clara california california's great america now this is another screamscape rumor however according to them they they may be in the early stages of planning their next roller coaster and no it's not going to be a the rumored b&m hyper 
It's going to be a multi-launch roller coaster from Mach. Not exactly like Copperhead Strike, but a custom layout. I think this is a good fit for the park, as they don't really have a big standout launch coaster. And I think this would be a great fit. According to the... With the this is confirmed. Their B&M Hyper was originally supposed to come in 2020. But because of earthquake-proofing building codes, they weren't able to get that off the ground. So that became Orion as a Giga Coaster. So... So I don't know if they'll ever get that hypercoaster going. The hypercoaster may be a dead thing because of how they weren't able to do it. That which is another concern I have with the Knox Giga is that is because of earthquake proofing. How will they be able to get that thing earthquake proofed? The supports I made in that concept were the best I could do to try and make it earthquake proof, but I don't know how it is. I am not an engineer. I am not someone who knows this kind of stuff, so any of you engineers out there can roast me if you want, but um, it with that Knott's Giga. However, according to rumors for Great America, they may be getting a coaster in 23 or 24, and it sounds like it's going to be a Mock Rides launch coaster with a custom layout. But pl remember, this is a rumor, nothing confirmed, so please take this with a grain of salt as just a rumor. So we'll see about this, and I... I think this would be a nice fit for Great America. If this does happen, I think it'll be a great fit for the park. So that about wraps up this podcast. So what do you guys think? Do you think any of these two rumors will come true? What do you think about the new paint job on Drop Tower? What do you think of Air Force One at, at Fun Spot Atlanta? What do you think? Where do you think the new record-breaking Gerslauer is going to go? So put it down in the comments below, and I will... Be happy to respond to them, and I will be looking through those comments, and I cannot wait to see where to see if these rumors come true or not. So anyway, also before I wrap it up, I just want to say Kentucky, congrats to my Kentucky Wildcats football team for the for the win over Vanderbilt this weekend. Even though that the second half was not great defensively, we still got the win, and also our basketball team destroying Robert Morris after the frustrating loss to Duke. And hopefully, we take care of business these next two games with Mount St. Mary's. I think tonight. And then Ohio University on Friday. So hopefully we can take care of both teams. While that would while it would be very disappointing to lose any of those games, but never count it. We did lose that Evansville game or in the Richmond game last year. So please, so keep the foot on the gas cats. And then also New Mexico State football on Saturday. So we got a great game coming up. We have a great few games coming up. So anyway, I'll be sure to cover those when I get the chance. So Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys on the next podcast. See you guys soon.